Welcome to Aging Gracefully. I want you to get motivated to live a long, healthy life without regret. Well, here's a man who's doing just that, my friend Dan Regato. Thank you for being here. Welcome, Dan. Uh, thanks for inviting me, Catherine. So you and I met just not that long ago this year in 2020 through a mutual right. friend. And I immediately liked you, found you fascinating, interesting. You know all these inner secrets of the Avon Lake power plant. The rest of us live in curiosity of that big, huge building on the water. <laughs> so you are the power plant manager and you're here to really give us some good information. I think everybody is going to want to hear what you have to say today. How long have you been there at the Avon Lake Power Plant? Um, I came here in 2008, so it's been 12 years, going on 13 years. And actually I've been involved in the power generation industry for going on 40 years, a long time. So you have seen a lot of changes. Yes, things have changes. changed a lot and drastically over the past 10 years. Okay, but then, you know, an interesting thing is our power plant has been there not quite 100 years, right? Built in 1926. Right. It's still using the same process, essentially, generating electricity the same way, and yet different. You've seen some changes. Can you tell me about that? I mean, you know, we're basically generating electricity, you know, very similar to, like you said, uh, you know, we basically burn coal in this power plant we burn coal to create steam you know and uh, we use that steam to spin a turbine which turns a generator and produces electricity when you burn coal the coal turns into ash and you have heavy ash or bottom ash is what we call it because bottom ash is because it falls down into the bottom of the boiler and then the lighter ash is what we call fly ash and that goes out the top of the boiler goes through what we call in, in this plant a precipitator, electrostatic precipitator, where it's, it's very similar to the electronic air cleaner in your house that takes any debris out of the air. So it uses a, a, a electrical charges to charge the ash and then it, it draws the ash out of the flue gas and then from there it goes up the stack. So the precipitator is taking out 99.9% .9 of the ash that's in the flue gases from the burning of the coal. It's been that way since, again, since the, you know, 1926 when the first unit came online here. And here we are in 2020 doing it the same way, right. but obviously, you know, we've done some more uh, improvements over the years. I mean, they've made things a lot more efficient, um, uh, which obviously, you know, again, we're trying to make an efficient product. Uh, we're using a lot newer technology. And then of course, you know, we, a lot of what we call the back end control, which is the things that, uh, you know, keep the environment clean, uh, you know, came on in the, in the 70s and has progressed into here into the, into the 2020 timeframe. Um, and, and that's made things a, a lot different for, mm -hmm. for the environment. It hasn't really produced any more electricity, but it definitely makes our product cleaner. And then other changes there you've had multiple owners of this big building, right? The plant here was built by, and everybody knows this, Cleveland Electric Illuminating back in the 20s. And Cleveland Electric Illuminating owned this plant up until pretty much the late 1990s. And uh, then it was uh, transferred over to like five or six owners since then. So uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, in the past, I'll say 20 years, it's owned, been owned by five or six year, you know, owners. And for the first uh, 80 years, it was owned by one. A couple of add-ons to this building. Um, the first uh, four to five units were put on in the, uh, in the 20s. And uh, then there was another add-on in like 43. And then another add-on in 49. And another add-on in 59. And another add-on in 69. So you, you're right. When you look down the turbine room or the turbine hall, you can kind of see the different changes in tile and things like that as you move on through the years. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it, it got a little bit, I'll call it cheaper looking uh, as it went into the, the late 60s uh, because the uh, 
the 1920s through 40s uh, is very, very ornate. Yes, yes, those original walls are really beautiful. I mean, one of the things that I'm very proud of, and, and I know you've seen when you walk in the entrance, I, I've always said, man, this entrance is just unbelievable. It looks like you're walking into a bank instead of a power plant. Yes, because there's also, there's that window you said people used to pay their bills there Correct. in the lobby. Yep. There's also that old elevator. That yeah, was. elevator from the 20s. So uh, again, that reminds you of the old days when you used to go to the department stores with your with your mom, you know, and they used to have the elevator with the chain, you know, uh, door that pulls across. Yep. That's what it and, reminds and the elevator person helping, right? Mm -hmm. Get mm -hmm. everybody in and then close the door. Yes. So I... I would say there's something very interesting that most people really don't know. Um, I think it's an assumption that the power plant is running all the time, but that's not true, is it? I really would love for you to talk about that. Yeah, um, uh, you know, as things have changed over the years, you know, and I'm just going to say, you know, again, uh, the uh, manufacture of electricity has become very, very competitive over the past you know, 20, 30 years. And uh, we've seen a marked change in the, you know, about 2016 when fracking started coming on the scene, the price of natural gas dropped considerably, uh, more generation, more electricity is being produced with natural gas. So uh, our operation here changed in 2017. We went from running, I'm gonna say from five to 6,000 hours a, a year uh, down to somewhere around 12 to 1500. So we're only running approximately 60 days a year. And it just depends on the price of electricity. And that just goes to show you how the price of electricity has uh, dropped due to less demand and uh, the price of natural gas. And then you mentioned to me before, there's a bidding process and you don't even know which days the units are gonna be powered up, right? Not right. until like the day before? Yeah, I mean, uh, every every morning, every power plant that's in the area, or actually probably across the country, places a bid into the market of the price of their power. And uh, what we have, we call PJM, is the, uh, is the system operator in this area. They basically go out and get all the loads from all the different first energies of the world that are actually distributing electricity and they figure out what the load is gonna be for the following day. And then they fulfill that load with those uh, bids provided by the generation uh, owners. And so at 1.30 in the afternoon, like 1.30 in the afternoon this afternoon, we know whether we're running or not tomorrow. So uh, that means if we're not, that means we have to go into a long startup process and get the unit online, generally by the following morning, so. Okay. Kind of yeah. like all it's hand, not all like flipping a switch. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like flipping a switch, is not it? Not at all. No. no. <laughs> That's simple. So I have my glasses on so I can look at my notes because I had posted a picture of you on Facebook, as you know, and I asked if people had any questions. And we got a lot of responses. So I want to run down that list. Okay. And, okay. and let's let everybody know because as I think we can pretty much assume what one person wants to know. There's many others that want to know the same thing. So Debbie wants to know when's it going to shut down. Obviously, there are some people who don't like the power plant. Well, yes, I mean you know um, there probably are, but I, you know I, I guess I look at it as my it's my uh, desire to you know we have 55 people working here and 55 people that are supporting families throughout the area. And it's my desire to, to try to keep those people actively employed for as long as I can. And it's, it's, a, it's a struggle being a coal fired power plant in today's world. And uh, you know, it's very competitive and we are doing our best to shave costs and, and make ourselves more efficient and to try to stay here as long as we can. I mean, I'm, I've, I've seen a lot of people retire from here and I want to continue to see people who retire from here. And I respect, you know, it's probably not the, 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 the greatest site on Lake Road, but we try to do our best to keep the place looking nice and, 
and having flowers and trees and trying to make it look appealing to the people in the area. And, you know, I, I you know, I, I enjoy the people in Avon Lake. Um, you know, we, we try to be a big, you know, community supporter um, through financial gifts and things like that, wherever we can. I know our employees support different organizations and, um, you know, we're very community minded. Yes, I think probably more so than people know. Uh, we know that, of course, we have advantage from the taxes from the power plant. But in addition, all of the companies that have been owners have been generous to this community in other ways, gifts to schools, to the students, to CRS, our community resource services as well. Um, and then your employees there have been wonderful too, doing a, a giving tree, right? Yeah, At yeah. the holidays for uh, families also who are in crisis or need at any given time. So really, we do have some uh, financial advantages and um, and I think it's so much cleaner than it used to be, right? So we sometimes think of how bad it used to be, but it meets all standards. Am I yeah, right? we're current, you know, we meet all our, you know, we have very, we have an air permit, we have a water permit, uh, which are both are very stringent and, uh, and we ourselves, you know, we have our priorities within the plant and safety and the environment are our top two priorities. Uh, those come before uh, production of electricity or budget. I mean, those are our top two and they're tied. If we feel like we're violating the environment, we take the unit off. I mean, that's, that's the way it is. Okay, good to know. Now, a gentleman named Frank, who lives very close to uh, the location of the power plant, mentioned that there used to be an amusement park in that location. And so I reached out to my friend, Sherry Spencer. She does most of the history right here in Avon Lake. She's one of our fun historians here. And she said Beach Park opened, the Beach Park Amusement Park opened in 1898. In that location, it was uh, demolished then in 1925 and construction of the power plant began. So I, I understand that in the apartments across the street on Lake Road, there's a number of pictures inside there that show the old amusement park. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure there were, I'm sure obviously back in those days, you know, there were people that in Avon Lake that, you know, were sad to probably see the amusement park go and this big power plant be put in its place. I'm sure it was probably controversial at the time. Yeah, so then Pamela and Judy both mentioned that there are rumors of fantastic art inside. I thought that was interesting. And and even that there could be some beautiful mural, but you and I looked around. I didn't notice I'm not anything. Aware of you any didn't kind of mural. Um, obviously the uh, the 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 different uh, different concrete and, uh, and the structure is very, very artistic and everything like that, but I don't know of any mural in the plant. Right, and no beautiful artwork. No, um, no. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, interesting thing that the three people who said, um, no, there was a fourth, three of the four said, hey, how can we get a tour? Three of the four were women who wanted tours. So I know I'm not the only woman who is really fascinated by this power plant. How often do you do tours? Is it something you can just offer up to the public at this time? We do tours quite a bit. I mean, we like to have, we've had colleges come in, you know, energy classes, electricity classes. Uh, we've had elementary schools come in and, uh, so we like to give tours. Uh, the only thing right now with the whole COVID thing, uh, not, I mean, we'd have to do smaller groups, um, mm -hmm. but I mean, it, it could be possible. And I know, like I said, you know, if there's a just a few people interested, you know, hey, give me a call. Uh, you know, I'd like to try to I'd like to try to make sure people in Avon Lake understand this place. Uh, someone named William said that growing up, they used to swim next to the power plant and said, was it contaminated stuff coming out of there years ago? 
I, I, you know, again, I don't know when he's talking about or what he's talking about exactly. He's, I but, believe he's at least our age. Okay. So he's probably talking about something maybe back in the sixties or seventies or whatever. Um, you know, I mean, uh, things have changed, like I said earlier right. in, the, in the broadcast, you know, um, and, you know, EPA, which, you know, again, uh, has changed the environment for all of us, right? Uh, protecting it for us and our, and our future generations. And, uh, you know, they kind of came about in the early 70s. So uh, I know that there were definitely uh, some water projects and some air projects that were put on this plant back in the 70s. So it could have been prior to that. I, again, I'm not sure exactly what he's speaking of, but I mean, things have changed, like I said. Yeah. Yes. For the better. Okay. Um, so that answers Alan's question because he wanted to know about grade school children and that. So yes, the answer is yes, we'd have to do small groups. And now here is something that everybody talks about, blowing the stacks. Sometimes it'll be in the middle of the night, we'll wake up from this loud noise it can wake you up out of a deep sleep. It can shock you even in the day. It's very loud. I don't live very far from the power plant, so it's especially loud here. Let's talk about blowing the stacks. What is that? Is it blowing the stacks? Yeah, you know, and it's funny because, you know, uh, I've heard that term a few times and I just never understood what people were saying, but then I finally talked to somebody. Well, what, what we, what's going on is during the startup process of the plant, um, as part of the process, you know, we, uh, and I'm, it's going to get a little complicated. We run the steam through what we call our flash tank as part of the startup process before we go super critical with the unit. I know it's a lot of things people don't understand, but it's part of the startup process. And sometimes the control on that flash tank can get a little, little touchy. And this flash tank uh, can go, you know, it's, it's normally runs around uh, 1100 pounds pressure and it can go a little higher and what it does is it causes a safety valve to lift this safety valve is protecting that flash tank um, from damage and also the people around it right and so the safety valve uh, lifts and it basically lift uh, exhaust steam water vapor to the roof and that's what you hear when basically people hear the big loud bang and usually sometimes they don't It'll pop for about five seconds and then it'll sit and it'll stop. Then it'll pop for another five seconds. And this safety valve is much like the, uh, the uh, valve on your hot water tank, you know, the uh, safety valve on it and it's set to go off and it really protects your hot water tank. And this protects the flash tank here in the plant. And it's generally around when we're starting up the unit, um, which again, like I said, could be partially in the middle of the night and uh, uh, I try to, uh, what I've been trying to do lately is uh, alert the, uh, the mayor of Avon Lake that we're going into startup. So if he gets any calls or if the emergency services get any calls, like the fire department, you know, is the mm -hmm. plant blowing up or whatever, uh, they know what's going on. So we try to keep everybody informed. Um, and, you know, I believe we've done some things lately. We've got that problem much better under control. So it should be a should be a lot less of an issue for the public. Okay, so this summer, and I think this is what you mean by in better control too, you replaced the part, but yes. there was that day this summer that that noise went off, I don't know how many times, but well, we can hit you imagine new records. Like sitting, this, sitting here in the plant, what it sounds like, <laughs> but anyhow. Um, yeah, uh, we actually replaced the safety valve on that flash tank and in the process of replacing it, we had to set it or calibrate it on the vessel itself. So in that process of calibrating it, it probably went off, I'm going to say 30 times. Yes, it was a noisy day. Yeah, sorry. Where <laughs> everybody was saying, what is going on there? At least it was, at least it was in the morning and not in the middle of the night. You're that right. Yes, so when you have control over it, you keep that in the daytime. Yep. All right, we are almost done. Someone else wants the clock in the picture, that would be Mark. And I am I said, I really don't think that's for sale, am I right? Yeah, that's not, clock isn't for sale. I think that, uh, you know, that story. clock, yeah, I actually found that clock in a, uh, 
kind of an abandoned office in the back alleys of the plant <laughs> and uh you know cleaned it all up and brought it to our main conference room because i thought it was a you know a pretty neat piece and then there's a little history about that clock that clock was the central time piece of the plant and that clock controlled all the clocks around the plant um you know as part of putting all the different generating units on i'm sure you know obviously they wanted to keep accurate time of when they were putting the unit online or taking it offline so that was kind of neat I, I guess much like when back in the day when you were in your elementary schools i remember them having a central clock in the principal's office that controlled all the clocks around the uh, around the school Right, and I remember those days when they would be reset and we'd be watching the hands of the clock go around. Exactly. I remember that. Now, that you'd have to be our age or so yeah. to, to know these things, to remember these things. There was another gentleman that said, Dan, you are a fantastic manager. And that was really nice to see that he likes you a lot too. So you were fantastic to work for. So... Good yeah, that was just a really nice thing. I really appreciate when, and he was a good family member here. Yeah. Yeah. I know you think of everyone there more like family because really you, you work together, you spend your days there. And uh, yeah, one thing people maybe don't recognize, and, you know, I'm just going to throw this in there, you know, because I think it, it needs to be said is, you know, the people that work in a power plant, they're, there's like a brotherhood there. And they're special people and that, you know, they are no different than firemen or policemen. They are often away from their families on holidays because, you know, the power plant business is a 24 hours a day, seven days a week business. And whether it's snowing outside or whether it's huge storms, you know, we have to be there again to provide that product. And, you know, you, I know myself, you get spoiled. You just, you're at home, you turn a switch on, you turn the oven on, you have electricity. Uh, you don't think of the people that are actually working on the other end. So um, again, that's why I kind of think that, again, the people that work at this plant are really special and, and uh, you know, we treat them like family, but just like family members, sometimes they get a little bit, need to be brought back in line. But, but again, you know, <laughs> Uh, or a little extra nurturing. Yeah, a little nurturing. Yes. That's what I would call it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate you helping my electricity turn on every day. I appreciate what you do there and all the information that you've shared with us today. Yeah, I mean, obviously, coal fired power plants, there's not as many of them uh, today as there were 10 years ago or five years ago. Um, there's not many of them in Ohio. And uh, but, you know, I believe that, again, I'm, I'm for all different types of uh, generation. I, I, be, I believe you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket um, because you never know. Things change. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, yeah. So. All right. So, Dan, in conclusion, what do you think? What's your powerful secret to aging gracefully? Well, I mean, I guess that's a that's a tough question. Like, I I, I think uh, I think you're the poster child for aging gracefully if you've been on your Facebook page. But, uh, you know, I think that again, you have to look at yourself uh, from a physical, an emotional, even a spiritual side. You know, kind of say, hey, you know, what can I do? You know, it's no different than you know, everybody on uh, December 31st makes New Year's resolutions. But I think you need to think of all different types of your life. And I think it's it, a key is surrounding yourself with good people, right? Whether it be at work or at home, I think relationships are key. Um, you know, people that make you better, um, I think is really, really important uh, to aging gracefully. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving of your time today. Well, thank you. And it was just, it's great uh, talking with you and talking with everybody out there. And again, you know, give us a jingle, you know, if you want to for, go for a tour, um, we'd love to show you what the place looks like. Coming in the turbine here at 3,500 pounds per square inch, 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So inside here is a shaft like we talked about with the, the pinwheel blades. So the steam comes in the center, goes both directions. It's called a double flow. This is the HP turbine. 
And then they have IP turbine, which just stands for intermediate pressure. And then these two blue cylinders here, those are the low pressure turbines. And then right below those low pressure turbines is the condenser where the steam is condensed back into water. So this is all connected together. So when it turns, the whole thing is turning all the way down. So you're taking all that energy and converting it to work and turning the generator to create electricity. Water is under pressure. You need to have something to overcome that pressure. So this is the pump that pumps the water through the water. It's really driven by a little mini turbine. So that's a little mini pinwheel right there. So that's a little mini pin, mini turbine. So you have steam driving this motor feed pump. You have two of them. You need both motor feed pumps running to get full load out. Okay, so right here is the bottom of the boiler. So remember when I talked to you about when you burn coal, you create ash. There's two types of ash, a bottom ash and a fly ash. The bottom ash goes out the bottom of the boiler. The fly ash goes out the top of the boiler. So this is where the bottom ash falls down into. It's heavy ash falls down to the bottom of the boiler. Then we wash it out with water from here. So, and we're in the basement. We're in the boiler basement. They're carrying 20,000 volts, 20,000 amps, going up through this, going up and then through the wall, going out to the transformer. It takes that 20,000 volts and steps up to the other So the steam from the low pressure turbine comes down through here, comes into the condenser where it hits the cool tubes and condenses back down into water goes into the hot well, and then goes right back into the system again. This is the 4160, so there's, this is 4,160 volts in here. And each one of these are breakers that operate pieces of equipment. So just like when you turn on the light switch at home, there's a the control room that's turning on each one of these pieces of equipment. One of these breakers closes and provides the power to that equipment to start it up. Okay, so these ducts that you see, these red structures going that way, they go to that big box over in the end there, and that's called electrostatic precipitator. That takes all the, the fly ash out of the flue gas, all the particulate. Then it comes back through these other ducts, goes into the stack, goes out the stack. And how tall is the stack? Yeah, the stack I think is like 625 feet tall. and water from the bottom of the boiler gets piped up into that bin. The water decants off of the ash and the ash stays in that bin and then we dump the ash out of that bin every so often. But the water then goes back into the system and we use that same water to push the ash. This is uh, AT&T's equipment. 